Warning. Panic attacks. Injuries. Disclaimer, none of the songs, including intro, artworks, including thumbnail, or characters in the video are mine. This is not an accurate portrayal of the characters. This is not a defamation of character either. This is only for entertainment. Warning, foul language, grammatical mistakes, typographical errors. Kagami sighed as the water hit his head. Today was emotional to say the least. He knows he's a hothead. He knows how easy it is for him to get irritated. Of course he does. He knows it with how easily he can feel his face heat up as a migraine creeps into his head. But with how easy it is to irritate him. Kagami is surprisingly hard to anger. But now. Now he can't feel anything but anger. His entire body is heating up as he feels his blood boil. His hands are itching to do something to Akua's cheating ex. And Atsumu's asshole ex too of course. But he also know he can't do anything. At least not right now. Now. Okua needs him. He sighed once more when he remembered Akashi's words. Flashback. Akashi pulled Kagami aside as the others all comforted Okua and Atsumu. Both of them has stopped crying already and now they are on the couch holding each other. What do you want Akashi? He wouldn't normally dare talk to Akashi like that because no matter how much he denies it. Akashi scares the crap out of him. But right now. He's too anxious to care. He's disassociating. What? He's not letting himself feel. That's why he's so out of it. He's not aware of his surroundings because his brain is trying to protect him from anything that might trigger a breakdown. He's pushing all of his feelings and probably the memories of what happened that day into a locked box and that's not healthy. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, he's bottling down his feelings and sooner or later, he's going to explode. And seeing Atsumu-san now might have put a crack on the dam that is his emotions. So sooner rather than later, all of that emotion is going to come out like a flood. And it's probably going to be as painful and violent as one too. So watch him properly Kagami. End of flashback. With that memory making him anxious. Kagami hastened his movements and finished his bath and got dressed without drying himself completely. Just as he finished putting his pants on, he heard a sound of glass breaking from outside. Cursing. He immediately went out of the bathroom to the sight of a bloody Okoa curled up on the floor of his bedroom with glass surrounding him. He's quivering. Murmuring something Kagami can't hear and his hands are alternating between tugging at his hair and covering his ears. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Kagami was snapped out of his shock at Okoa's shout. Okoa-san. He ran to Okoa and held his hands. That started punching his head. Still. He noticed that his right hand was the source of the blood. Fuck. Did he punch the glass? Kagami didn't have time to properly examine Okoa because the second he touched him. Okoa threw his head back and screamed. A loud. Blood curdling sound that chilled Kagami to the bones. Kagami closed his eyes to try and shut out the sound as he held the thrashing Okoa closer and tighter to him. He doesn't know what's worse. The deathly silence or the sound of torture. He can feel it. Almost taste what Okoa was feeling. The emotions were so thick Kagami felt himself suffocating. Okoa was still thrashing in his hold. But Kagami can't let him go. He can still see the blood in his hands. The scratches in his arms. Even the wounds in his feet and knees from sitting on the glass-covered ground. He can't let go of Okoa because even as he's struggling in Kagami's hold, he's still trying to hurt himself. And the noise. Oh god the noise. The noise still hasn't stopped. Okoa was still screaming. Loud choked sobs echoing in the room and Kagami can feel it. Can see it. See what happened that day. Feel what Okoa felt that day. He can see himself. 
as Oikura, as he entered the room to see his boyfriend having sex with the girl. Feel the confusion. Feel the rage. The harsh sting of betrayal. The embarrassment of not being good enough that he was replaced. And the pain. Oh gods the pain Pele stop it stop 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 stop. Then it did. Everything stopped. Like a raging forest fire suddenly blown out by a cold wind leaving nothing but a desolate land. And he can feel the pit of his stomach. Feel it empty. Feel it churning as he tastes the bile in the back of his throat. He felt starving but at the same time. Like he's going to puke out everything. He can feel himself talking but he can't hear over the sound of blood in his ears. Over the sound of the torture Oikora was going through. It's bad. Like the feeling he has when they first battled Aomine. The feeling of helplessness as he watched his teammates lose while he sat on the bench. Moping. Except this was a hundred times worse. Kagami can feel his entire body trembling as he cried. The pain too much for him. Kagami has never seen this much pain. This much despair. But Oikora's emotions were so potent he can feel traces of it. He can't imagine what Oikora's feeling. Can't imagine how he can endure it. Oikora felt his breath hitch as he stared at the mirror. There. In the mirror was Osami. Looking pained. Looking horrified. No. Stop it. Get away. Get away from me. Stop. 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 No matter how much he screamed in his mind, the image wouldn't disappear. She was still standing there, looking as terrible as Oikora feels. Her hair was a mess. Her eyes were red from crying. And she was shaking. She looked pathetic. You stole him from me. How dare you. How dare you look hurt. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Please go away. Oikora started hyperventilating as he took a step forward to try and push Osami away then flinching back when she did too. Leave me alone. Osami's image started being distorted. Her image of pain started to morph to that of pleasure. Her hair was still messy, eyes still red, and she was still shaking. But her hair framed her face like a halo, like she was lying in bed. Her eyes were red from crying, but her pupils were dilated, lust shining through, and she was shaking, quivering from pleasure. No. Her cheeks flushed. No. Her eyes closed in ecstasy. No. Tears started pricking the corner of her eyes. Stop. She threw her head back as her mouth opened to let out a long, drawn-out moan. Hajime. Stop. Oikura jumped forward as he punched the mirror. But the images didn't stop. It multiplied. She multiplied. They multiplied. Even the smallest piece of mirror seemed to show their image. The memory. Seemed to play the couch shaking. The grunts and moans. The slapping of skin. The sheen of sweat as their naked bodies reflected the light. Stop. 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 Please stop. Oikura slowly went down his knees as he clutched his head, covering his ears as he curled on the floor. Shut up. Stop. Shut up. Stop. Moans filled the air, growing louder and louder until they were practically being shouted in his ears. Shut up. Please stop. Please. 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 I can't take it anymore. Then another voice joined. Oikura-san. Oikura. Stop being fucking annoying. Go away. Stop disturbing me. Crap Oikura. Shitakura. Oi. Sami. Osami. 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 No. Why? Why? Why would you do this to me? Why 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 why? He can taste it. The smell of sex permeating the air. He can remember when it was him that was beneath Iwaizumi. Can remember when it was him moaning his name. Can remember when it was his name being moaned. Can remember the feel of Iwaizumi's skin rubbing his. His taste. His smell. Everything. It makes him want to puke. Makes him want to scratch his skin. To drown himself in acid. To remove all traces of Iwaizumi in his life. He lifted his hand to hit his hand. To force the memory away but there was something stopping him. Something holding him tight. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Please let me go. He tried to get out of the grip of whatever was holding him but he can't. He struggled even harder as the sounds of pleasure. A girl and a boy's. Echoed in the room. As its volume grew louder. Louder and louder. So loud it reverberated in his skull. In his chest. Stop. Please. He can see the edges of his vision darken as he struggled to breathe. Choking on the smell of sex still on the air and drowning in his tears. He tried to struggle some more but the lack of oxygen was making him weak. He could could vaguely register someone shouting at him but the sound was too far away. Like he was underwater. Is that why he can't breathe? 
Oikawa's lungs started to hurt so he tried to gasp in air but there was something lodged in his throat. He can't breathe. It hurts. The edges of his vision darkened as the world tilted. Can't. Can't breathe. Help. Please help. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Oikawa gasped one last time. Failing to take in oxygen then his eyes rolled to the back of his head as he passed out. Kagami's heart beat faster and faster as Oikawa hyperventilated, air trying and failing to enter his lungs. He shouted, begged for Oikawa to breathe but he could see how difficult that was. Saw how Oikawa's mouth twitched to try and suck in a breath. So when Oikawa passed out, he breathed a sigh of relief. He thought that would fix the problem. If Oikawa was no longer conscious to panic, then he'd breathe again right? Wrong. As soon as he felt Oikawa stop moving, he immediately positioned him in his arms, ready to carry him and take him to the hospital. He examined Oikawa, looking for injuries he might not have noticed the first time. That's when he noticed that Oikawa wasn't breathing still. He cursed as his panic rose once again. He carried Oikawa to the bed and fumbled with his phone, immediately calling for an ambulance. As the phone rang, he administered CPR, which he thankfully knew. He didn't try and feel a pulse, too afraid to do so. Okay step 1, call 1, 1, 9, done. Step 2, check airway. Kagami recited, trying to keep his panic at bay. He tilted Oikawa's head and opened his mouth, checking for any sort of obstruction even when he knew there's none. Step 3, check if they're breathing. Kagami knows he's not but he checked anyway. He has no experience in giving CPR, but he does remember what he learned when Alex forced him and Tatsuya to learn first aid. Also, keeping his mind occupied by reciting and following the steps is taking his mind off his friend's state. He placed his ear next to Ikora's mouth and listened intently for 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. When there's none, as he expected. He began CPR but just as he was about to begin, the call connected. 119, what's your emergency? Kagami almost didn't notice it as he was too busy doing CPR. But thankfully, the voice penetrated through the fog in his mind. My friend's not breathing. Where's your friend? He right here. I'm trying to give him CPR. Where are you? KNB Apartments at High Q Street. Third floor. Unit 32. What's your name? Kagami Tiger. What's your friend's name? Oikawa Toru. Don't hang up. Help is on the way. Kagami's answers were hurried and frantic. Panic obvious but he still tried to answer as calmly as possible so he could be understood. When the conversation ended, Kagami focused on doing the CPR, the 119 operator giving updates in the background. Please note that I do not know the procedure. I'm just following the script I found. 25. 26. 27. 28, 29, 30, 30 chest compressions then 2 rescue breaths. I also do not know how to do CPR. I just searched it. He tilted Oikawa's chin, opened his mouth and pinched his nose then gave 2 rescue breaths. He moved then did another 30 chest compressions. His hands are clammy and he's sweating despite the cold weather but he didn't even notice. He just kept on performing CPR even as his dinner threatened to escape his stomach. He just kept counting, trying to ignore the screams in the back of his head. 28, 29, 30. He performed another rescue breath, and this time, he noticed Oikawa's chest started to rise and fall. He immediately listened for his breathing and when he heard it, as well as felt a puff of breath in his ear, he collapsed in relief. Thank you. Thank you thank you thank you thank you. He clasped Oikawa's hand between his and pressed his forehead on it, whispering continuous thanks. Just then, the help arrived and carried Oikawa to the ambulance, Kagami trailing behind them. Oikawa had several injuries. The worst was his right hand which was bruised and haven't stopped bleeding. Kagami was too focused on the fact that Oikawa stopped breathing to notice his hand was still bleeding. Thankfully, he didn't lose a lot of blood. The doctors said that punching through glass isn't normally that bad but Oikawa must have punched the glass too hard so that happened. The worst case scenario was if tiny shards of glass got stuck in his wound but thankfully, there was none. All Oikawa needs to do is rest his hands for about a month and everything is fine. They both also had wounds on their legs when they kneeled down on the ground. Kagami didn't even notice or feel his wounds. 
The hospital let them stay overnight as Oikoa still hasn't woken up. Kagami got a private room because he was afraid what Oikoa's reaction would be to other people when he wakes up. Kagami was in a state of being asleep but still awake enough to be aware of his surroundings. So when Oikoa showed signs of waking up, he immediately scrambled out of his chair to check on him. Oikoa opened his eyes and just stared at the ceiling. Kagami watched him, waiting for him to do something. When minutes passed and nothing happened, he spoke. Oikoa-san. Oikoa blinked. Fog leaving his eyes. He turned his head and looked at Kagami before smiling slightly. Small enough not to be noticeable but with how he was the past few days. He might as well be beaming. Kagami. Hey Oikoa-san. Kagami smiled. His hands moving to brush a stray hair away from Oikoa's face. How you feeling? Bad. Oikoa smiled bitterly. Tears streaming down his face. Like I've been cheated on. Like I've just been betrayed by the person I trust the most. Kagami swallowed but didn't answer. He just let Oikoa pour out all his feelings. When he noticed that Oikoa was having difficulty breathing since he was crying so much, he gently pulled him up and let him cry on his shoulder. Oikoa just cried there silently until he ran out of tears while Kagami just listened, silently seething. When Oikoa's cries tapered to a stop, Kagami offered him water then they both just sat there, facing each other. She looks like me. Who? Osami. Before Kagami could ask who Osami was, Oikoa continued. He cheated on me with a girl that looks like me. Oikoa laughed bitterly. I guess I should be flattered. He does find me pretty. After all, he did find someone who looks a lot like me albeit with more curves. He did always complain about my flat ass so I guess he was desperate for sparkles. Cake sparkles. Ha 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 ha. Kagami clenched his fist. Somehow, Oikoa's laugh was even more painful than his cries. God I'm so stupid. I wonder how long he's been cheating on me. Is it a one-time thing? Or has it been going on for a long time? I guess he finally got fed up with my shitty personality. Kagami gripped Oikoa's hands. Oikoa-san. He has a lot of things he wants to say but he doesn't know where to start. Right. I shouldn't talk like this about myself. Sorry Kagami. I, you know, I haven't given you a nickname yet. Kagami realized that Oikoa wanted to change the topic but he didn't want to. He should really address Oikoa's confidence issues. But, he saw the desperation in Oikoa's eyes. Felt hands grip his tight. Saw lips tremble. He's practically begging him to drop it. So he did. Kagami tried to smile as genuinely as he can. Yeah, guess you haven't. Oikoa breathed a sigh of relief. He squeezed Kagami's hands in thanks and got a squeeze in return. Um, I'll call you Mr. Kitty Cat then. Kagami chuckled breathlessly. I should have expected you'd come up with something ridiculous. Oikoa pouted. What do you mean ridiculous? It suits you. Oikoa-san. I'm a 6 foot 5, 85 kilograms pack of muscles and my face screams murder. I get it. You're tall and muscular. No need to brag. Oikoa rolled his eyes but a small smile was on his lips. I'm not bragging Oikoa-san. Kagami pinched Oikoa's nose, surprised at his own action. He was about to apologize, afraid that he crossed a line when Oikoa spoke. Ow, oh, Mimi. Oikoa used his free hand, the one that's not holding Kagami's, to rub his red nose. Kagami snorted. I'm just saying, I don't think such a cute as name would suit me. Where did you even get it? I got it from your name. Kagami raised an eyebrow. How did you get Mr. Kitty Cat from my name? Well, your name is Tiger right? But I couldn't call you Tiger because I already named Tiger that. Oh, did you name Tiger after me? Kagami wanted to tease Oikoa but he's the one who blushed when Oikoa answered. Yes. Wait really? Well, you were the only one who really liked him at first so I thought it was fitting. Plus, he's a fighter. Oh, yes. So anyway, I can't call you Tiger but... Tiger are basically just overgrown cats and you're an overgrown cat. You're also really sweet too so Mr. Kitty Cat is fitting. Kagami and Oikoa blinked at each other for a few seconds after Oikoa's explanation. Then Kagami huffed out a laugh. Kagami held out a hand and Oikoa stared at it in confusion. Kagami smiled at him then. Hello Oikoa-san. I'm Mr. Kitty Cat. Nice to meet you. Kagami saying Mr. Kitty Cat isn't as cute as Oikoa saying it but it made Oikoa giggle. It was a small breathless one that others would call a huff but it was there and it was genuine. Kagami smiled softly at him. 
Oikor is still far away from the full-blown laughter that he freely gave away before, and Kagami noticed how in the small pauses in their conversation, Oikor's eyes glaze over and pain flashed briefly in it, saw how most of his smiles and laughs were forced, but it's a start, a big leap away from the silence and blank stares.